in a calculus of with parametric curves, but before we do that, we'll still look at some parametric curves. Last class we introduced it, we, we looked at an ellipse. We also just looked at the curve that once we eliminated the parameter, it was actually a cubic curve. And you can eliminate the parameter if you want. Um, I thought I'd just start with an example, just a common example of a, a parametric curve. So here's a parametric curve, and we'll just sketch it. I thought I'd put down one of the most common ones you see in, in calculus three. Something like this. Um, there you go. There's parametric equations. A parametric curve, this is defining some parametric curve. And sometimes they give you limits on you know how far to sketch it. Go from t equals this value to t equals this value, like t equals negative power of two to t equals power of two. But let's just sketch this curve. Let's just go ahead and do it. And remember this method works every time, right? I just make a table. Uh, but because of cosine and sine, the nature of these trig functions, do you agree for the t values that we select? It'd be good to use 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, etc. I'm going to do that. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And let's just see what happens with these x, y coordinates. We'll sketch the curve. We'll even put an arrow on the curve to indicate the path in which t increases. Um, it's going on at zero. Suppose sine is zero. Boom. Sine is zero, zero. Don't I get the point five zero? How about power two? Well, that's zero, that's... Last class we did an ellipse. Let's put a five here as well. I apologize. Take a five in front of sine of three. Just to see how this is different. If we got fives, both coefficients of the cosine and the sine. When well, that comes out to five, that's negative five, zero. That's zero, negative five. And finally, this point's the same as this point. And it's five, zero. Okay. We'll sketch the curve. Sketch the parametric. Um, what's it come out to be? So this is just a what? Circle. So it takes on a circle. That's the curve. Which way is it going though, as t increases? That way or this way? It's going counterclockwise. It was at <coughs> five zero. This was at t equals zero. And up here, t equal pi over two, and it was going this way. So I'll just put an arrow to indicate the direction of that. They write that in the directions too in section ten point one. They say sketch a curve, draw an arrow to indicate the direction as t increases. I only plotted positive numbers, but this gave us the full loop. This just continued repeating this pattern, right? Um, it's funny, this section. I know we hit parametric curves. Today we're going to do calculus with parametric curves. Then you won't see parametric curves after that. You won't see them after that um, until Calc 3, until you get into Chapter 12. And then they come up repeatedly. Um, all of calculus 3, you'll notice doing everything parametrically, even up to chapter 16. So you'd be in chapter 16, like the remaining part of a calc 3 course, and you'll want to make a circle represented by parametric equations. So you're going to have to reflect back on this. It may be a distance, though. This is what chapter? Chapter 10, and you'll be in chapter 16. So it's just something just just recall. It's the only probably pitfalls, how we hit it, and we don't see it for a while. So very good. Um, Hey, I'm just curious, what do you think would have happened? This thing went counterclockwise. What would happen if I did sine and cosine? And I'll use the same. I just, I just want to see what's the difference. It definitely will still make a circle, everyone. 
And you notice y? What's going on with this relationship? x squared plus y squared, well, if that equal 1, it would equal, what's 5 squared? Yeah. But see that it's making a circle? That's what we're saying, it's still making a circle. That's a circle in Cartesian, right? That's where if we eliminated the parameter. Um, but what's the difference? Let's just see. I'll take all these. We know it's going to be a circle. I'll take that out. What's going on at zero? Zero, five. Five, zero. Well, I can just start there. Now, when it started at zero equal five. Now that's t equal to zero. Here's the difference. I'm plugging in t equal to zero in here. And then t equal to five or two, it went to here. And we can fill in the rest. It's going to follow a circle again. What's the only difference then? There you go. So it's just something important to remember for count three. The only difference here is how it moved in terms of t increasing in the direction. Because you'll be doing something called line intervals. And they call, when it's, when it's moving counterclockwise, they, they call that positive orientation. That's the word they'll use, positive orientation. And you'll sit there and go, well, how can I make it you know, have positive orientation? Put the cosine before the sine <laughs> in terms of x and y. You put sine before cosine, I'll rotate this one. So I want to get that? Hey, cool. And one more thing, I just wanted to show you that that's a circle. These also would be circles. Um, x equal to sine of 2t, y equals cosine 2t. I just want to give you a bunch of ex examples of what circles look like. 5 cosine 4t. Oh, I used 5 before. I used y equals 3 sine 14. Circle, this is a circle, this is a circle. So even if these had two t's in there, cosine 2t, sine of 2t, you'll still be having a parametric curve that is a circle. Okay? And it's by that the tag, you know, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. This is a circle with a radius 1, this was a circle with a radius 5. What's this circle radius? Trace three. Can we trace three? I have a radius of three. You'll see like x squared plus y squared would turn out to be nine. That's what's happening there. So that's a circle, that's a circle, that's a circle. You get a lot of circles. But I'll go back to the problem we did last class. We had something like this. Three sine t and was that it? That wasn't a circle, what was it? That made the ellipse. So you see the difference? What if one has a three, one has a one? Okay, now you got the ellipse. Okay. And then anything else, you're just plotting a curve. When it comes to, you know, x equals t plus one and y is t squared plus two. So, hey, one more of these. I'm picking this one because I did this like two weeks ago in my Cal 3 class. Alright, can you sketch this? x equals 2 squared of t and y equals 2 minus t. Just so you don't think everything is trigonometric. <laughs> Not all parametric curves are going to be trigonometric. How about that? And let's just go from 0 to 4. Let's just sketch this curve from zero. So in chapter 13 in Calc 3, you sketch the parametric curves, but then you draw vectors on them. Tangent vectors, which are velocity vectors, and this represents position. Um, you want to just use zero, one, two, three, and four? They said just sketch from zero to four. What's going on at zero? <coughs> zero. Zero. Two. How about a one? Two. One. One. How about a two? Uh, 
Two squared. Two squared to two all right. <laughs> what's, what's two times one point four about? Square root of two is one point four. Two point eight. Like that. Just about two point eight. And two minus two is zero. All right. Another uh, square root of three is about one point seven. What's two times one point seven? Three point seven. Three point, what was it? Three point four. Some roughly three point. Because we're plotting these. Right, we're gonna plot it. So we're like, ah, I'll plot that about three point four. Put a three in here. It's what? At least this is neat. What's this coming up? Two times the square root of four is two times two is four, but this goes to two minus four is. All right, let's just see what all this is. And we'll put an arrow on it to represent the that. Okay, was it zero two? Here's my worst. Here is a test. Is there a two there or there? And it happens a lot. Where is zero two? Is it that one or that one? This is the x axis, that's the y axis. Y axis. Right there, very good. So just be careful. Because that can throw off everything else, right? That's a good sketch. Very good. Two, one. 2.8, zero. Okay, about there. 3.4, negative one, and then. At four, it got down to negative two. Okay, this curves slightly. Like and which way is it moving? Here's the path. That's the direction of the path. Now I'm curious, if you wanted to, could you eliminate the parameter? Could you eliminate the parameter if you wanted to? That means get rid of t. T is the parameter. That's why they call these parametric equations. Uh, we'd have to do some substitution, so I'll let you all be creative. What could you substitute? Like, could you solve for t in one of these? And pick the one that's easier. I think that's easier. What would t equal? Y or 2 minus y. All right, t would equal 2 minus y. I'll make another. T equals 2 minus y in this relationship, right? And then I'll take this 2 minus y and substitute it into this equation. Right? So x will equal 2 times the square root of 2 minus y. Right? Does that make care of that? Um, and that might help much, but what if you square both sides? You might make sense of this thing. You get what? x squared equals 2 times parentheses 2 minus y. 2, 4 minus 2y. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, well, let me see. x squared would equal. What's that? 8 minus a 4y equals x squared. And I'm just playing around with this. What would y equal if I wanted to solve for y? I could do add 4y over here. This looks like a problem, huh? But then you got to divide the what? By 4. What's 8 over 4? 2. So does this look familiar in a pre calc course? That's a parabola. It's got a negative front. So instead of being an up U, it's a what? It's a down U, and it shifted what? Up two notches, right? The only reason it's Y, because it has that coefficient of that. I didn't have to do this, though, did I? That's what I mean. I just wanted you to see that in these problems, it's like, oh, I can eliminate the parameter T and make the curve like I did back in, you know, prior to this calculus course. Calc 2. Is that okay with that? Hey, now we're going to do calculus with parametric curves. And that just means we're going to apply some calculus to this. Let's get a tangent line to a curve. We'll find a tangent line to the curve. But everything's going to be in T, so there's the challenge. So we're going to come up with some, some math forms for this. Um, here's the first example. Can I raise the? OK. No, great question. Like this one was parabolic. I, and I actually love your question because I know I hit a lot of those because those come up a lot in Cal 3, but 
You also get this very often. I want to give you an example. We don't have to sketch it. But just for your observations. Do you notice this doesn't have any trig expressions? And it doesn't have any square roots. And it doesn't have any x t squareds or t cubes. This would be a straight line. So it's easy, very easy to recognize a straight line parametrically. You won't have any t squareds. You won't have any, it's like a y equals mx plus b. That's what this is. This is a y equals mx plus b. And they're very easy to recognize. Because there's no t squareds, there's no t cubes, there's no sine of t's or cosine t's or cube roots or anything like that. But if you sketch that, make it, you're going to notice you just get a straight line. I think that's important because all you'll do in Calc 3 is you're just going to add a z component. You have like pi minus d. It's still a straight line, just in three-dimensional space. So I love your question. Not everything's a circle. You get a lot of circles, but not everything. Or ellipse. Sometimes you get curves that are parabolas, but you do get some lines. I think great. Everyone, this problem is like number seven and ten point two. They want you to find an equation of the tangent line to a curve. So the first of all. Let's go back. What's the equation of a tangent line to a curve? Y equals mx plus b, right? Or if I put it in point slope, point slope form, isn't the equation of a tangent line to a curve? Well, that's the point. So I just want to point that out. That's what they're asking us to get. The challenge is everything is in t, the parameter t. So we need to do something. We've got to figure something out how we're going to work with that. Because we're used to this slope here is just what? That's just f prime of what variable? x, but now everything's going to be in t's. By the way, what's another way I can write that? Um, dy dx? y prime. y prime, f prime of x, do you all agree? So the challenge here, we're like, what's going on in 10.2? We know parametric curves. These curves define parametrically. Usually they use the parameter t. And something else I want to tell you. It doesn't always have to be t. It could be an m. The parameter could be an M, it's just the common variable that we'll use. Use T. Always use T. All right. All right. All right, so here's the equation. You'll notice it's parametrically X equals, I'm going to change it up a little bit, okay? Um, how about X equals 2 plus 3 natural log of T. And I got Y equal to T squared plus 6, and the directions, I'll leave this here, they say find an equation of the tangent line to the curve. All right. Don't they need a point? Don't we need a point? So I have to give you a point. So where are we finding that? At what point? So how about at the point? I'm going to make it up. How about the point? Oh, i got to make sure it's on a curve. Two, seven. Yes, because that's on a curve. I just made up that point. So we're going to find equation of the tangent line of the curve at that point. You all agree if we eliminate the parameter, this is just a calculus one problem. I want to be clear about that. Does anyone agree? If we ended up, we, we figured out a way to eliminate the parameter, you know, solve for t, then what? Substitute the other, you just turn this into a calculus one problem. So feel free to look at it that way. The only thing is sometimes it can get, net, sometimes it makes it easier, sometimes it makes it hard. I do want to point that out. It depends on the problem. Sometimes it's, oh, it's an easy substitution. I know this curve. And then other times it gets, oh, I got to do product rule. I got to do quotient rule. So anyways, we're going to figure out a new way to get this dy dx. So how about this? How about, let's let dy dx be, because we have these t's, right? And how about I just multiply one to it? I'm going to make it bigger. And when all I'm going to do, you know the rules of mathematics, they call this the identity property. Let's just multiply a 1 to this. I won't affect it. What's 1 times 5? 5. Well, what happens when you multiply a 1 to a 7? It stays 7. Well, 
I'll just fall by one of this, which is 1 over dt and 1 over dt. And this will be our math equation for finding dy dx that we can put right there. So I'll put that in your notes. This will be our equation that we'll use to find dy dx. That's dy dx. Do you notice what I did? I just multiplied 1 over dt times 1 over dp. Hey, how do you divide fractions? Just so you can check that this works. When you divide fractions, you multiply the what? The reciprocal, right? And when I do that, what would I get? Dy over dx. Let's just check it. Let's check to make sure I'm not making up some trash here. <laughs> I said dy or dt times dt over dx. Does it work? Yeah, so that's what I mean. Feel free. If you forget this on a test, just go, wait a minute. I know this has to work out to be dy or dx. See how it works? So that's our nice invention. That's how we'll find this. Get the derivative of y with respect to t, put it here. Get the derivative of x with respect to t, and then we're going to plug in the what? The point. And then we're going to be like, aha. There is going to be a little moment where we're going to go, huh? So we'll get there. I'll wait till we get there. Someone good with this? So for your notes, What's the formula when we're doing calculus with parametric curves to find dy dx? Just dy dt over dx dt. Cool. All right, let's do it then. What's dy dt? Oh, that's this guy. Ah, 2, 2. What's dx dt? Ooh, what's the derivative? 2 is 0. Well, what's the derivative of 3 L on a t with respect to t? 3 over t. 3 over t. Because everyone, do you agree the derivative of natural log of t is 1 over t? And the 3 is just a constant, right? So I'll put this down here. Get this out of the way so we have room. This is awesome. I'm going to get this answer right. Here's my answer. Find the equation that changes on to the curve. Y minus, what was the y one day? 7. Seven. Equals, we're going to put the slope there. That's that prime of x. x minus a 2. So what's going right here? The dy dx that we just found. But everyone, I'm stuck. Huh? Don't you need to plug a point in there? That's the point. That's not a t. This is important. Let's label this. That is not t, and that's not t. What's this letter? That's x. That's y. This diagonal formula we just got has t's in it. So we need a math method that we all have to share, make sure everyone's aware of. And when you get stuck like this, you can figure out the t value. I need to need the t value at this point. What is t at this point? At the point 2, comma 7. How can I do that? Am I going to weigh? Oh, he knows. What would you do? You could use the original equation to solve the t. He says use the original equation. What I need you to do, use the original equation. And you could set, whichever one's easier to you, set the 2 plus 3 L on a T equal to 2 and solve for T. Or, what's another option? If that's messy for you. Set the T squared plus 7, T, excuse me, T squared plus 6 equals 7 and solve for 2. Okay? Well, I'm going to try, which one looks easier to you? I'm trying to figure out T. So and this is a big problem right now. Question mark. What is the T value? I just want to find out what it is so I can plug in the number in here and put my slope and have the final answer. Right? right? The, the left one, you can have to get the square root plus minus on the right one. Okay, good observation. It says, if I looked at the right one, t squared plus 6 would have to equal what? A 7. He goes, that's easy. 7 minus 6 is 1. The trouble is, this gives me t equal to two possible answers. And we know t is only going to be one answer here. t could be a 1 or a Negative one. Y'all follow me? Which one is it? That'd be a 50-50 chance. T's either one or negative one, though. At least we limit it down. We've what? Narrowed it down to two options. So when we know something, T has to be one or negative one. <coughs> but to know for sure, let's set the two equal to the original two plus three on two. And then you can help me solve that. So in the T value, this is equal to this. Solve for T. Well, it's one or negative one. Which one is it? Let's find out. 2 plus 3L and a T must be equal to a 1. A 2. There you go. I said the x is equal to each other. Uh, you can't put a negative number in a log. It's a great observation. 
What Sean is saying now when she goes, don't waste your time here, because she knows you can't put a negative number into a natural log, it's undefined. So it must be t equal to 1. So Sean, I love it. I'll keep working the math here, but she's saying if you don't want to waste your time here, she has investigated that natural log of t, and she's saying you can't get the natural log of a negative value. Right? It's not in the domain. So it's got to be t equal to 1. Now on this problem, t equals 1, but I'll keep solving this in case someone took this root. Uh, three on t equals zero. Natural log of what is zero? I'll divide a three on both sides, so natural log of t equals zero. T equals one. We found it. But better than this, Sean, I agree with your observation. Just saying, well, t has to be positive. So on what number are we plugging in here? We're going to do this at, I'll drop the vertical line here. At what point? At t equals one. Hey, by the way, in this course, the parametric curves, and in Calc 3, if you ever get stumped on this, I do want to point out t is usually something really simple, like 0, 1, or 2. Do you remember that? It's not something trying to freak you out. Like t is equal to 35 over 7. They're usually getting you at a simple point, like t equals 0, t equals 1, or t equals 2. In this case, t equals 1. t equals 1. Same thing, though. Uh, you, you can imagine how many times this is the thing that stumps someone on a Cal 3 test. They got everything right, but they got stuck trying to find it. Because we it's this idea of parametric versus Cartesian. Parametric versus Cartesian. And we gotta get those, combine those, understand those in terms of how they relate to each other. Alright, let's plug this in everyone. What's two times one over three over one? What's the slope? Two thirds thirds. There you go. And you believe the answer just like that on a test, because it didn't say you had to solve for y, right? That's the equation of the tangent line. Unless you want to make it y equals mx plus b. Do you like to do that? There's nothing wrong with that. Well, there's one danger. What if I distribute, make a math error? Then I lose my, you know, the right? So, oh, wait, look, that's the equation of the tangent line. Is that okay? Man, you all are awesome. Keep in mind, you could have eliminated the parameter and then just dealt that with everything in y's and x's. I've seen that happen before. How am I doing okay on this stuff? This but is the stumper, though. How they don't give you t. They never mention what t does. T wasn't his problem. I, I'm just trying to remember back in calculus that all a slope is, is a, a derivative is a slope. So you're That's using right. the t as a, to solve the slope, basically. That's we should take time just to talk about that. Any curve. A tangent line to the curve, the slope of the tangent line to the curve is just the first derivative. The second derivative deals with concavity, and we're going to do that now. And when second derivative deals with concavity, when is it second derivative positive, and when is second derivative negative? Remember that? We can put that on the board, because we got first derivative, and we're going to have to come up with an equation for second derivative. It's not going to be hard, it's going to be this simple. How oh, I just divided t's here, <laughs> dt, dt, okay? Um, first derivative deals with slope, a tangent line to a curve, rate of change. What does second derivative deal with? Concavity, right? All right, I'm going to go like that. Is that, that. That's a portion of a curve. Is that concave up or concave down? Concave up. So you can put CU for concave up, or you can put the word cup because concave up, it looks like a cup. Does that help? Hey, when it's concave up, what do you know about second derivative? Second derivative of the function would be positive or negative? Positive. Very good. I'm just going to put F double prime is always positive. And what if it's concave down like an upside down frown? You can just put CD. Concave down like an upside down frown. Look. Because it's upside down frown, right? Concave down, second derivative is what? It's going to be negative. Okay. And then what do you call the point between the, a curve when it goes from concave up to concave down? Point of inflection. You both are awesome. Point of inflection. So you get a curve and like, you know, y equals x cubed does this. Whoop. And it goes whoop. But right there, they call that a point of inflection because it changed from concave down to concave up. But we got to invent a formula for this. It's already solved this. I'm going to leave this up here. That's slope. That's first derivative. Super job, everyone. Don't let that T value stump you. What's T? What's T? 
I don't know what P is. Just like you suggested, just plug in and look at the original, right? So Adam, you made that say you go look at the original expression of what x and y is in the curve, set it equal to the point. Whichever one's easier to work with, to find that t value. And in the end, I want t's like a 0 or 1 or 2. All right, second derivative. What is some notation we use for second derivative? That's one, right? Well, this is the funny one, and I'm going to start with that. Isn't that the second derivative of y with respect to x? OK, we need to make meaning out of that so we can do this. We are trying to create a formula that we can use for finding second derivative with parametric curves to put our t's in there. And by the way, I have an all I'm going to do with something similar to this. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, it's always d squared y, the notation they write. Very good question, Nicholas. That's how they write it. But listen, you probably know. Don't we always just kind of go like that? Yeah. Second group. I think that's important we see this now so we can know how to put the t's in there. This really means, what does this mean? This means I took the derivative of this. I want you to see that. I just took the derivative of a dy dx with respect to x. So when would you write that? When I was a student, I kept seeing this notation, Nicholas. I'm like, OK, I'll just remember that means second derivative. I put the square there rather than here. But I really didn't understand why I was doing that until one day I stumbled upon this and said, oh my gosh, that's what this is. Look, how many d's you got? Count d squared, you see? We took the, we're going to take the derivative of the dy dx. We're going to take the derivative of this with respect to what left? Yeah, keep it simple. You'll just keep saying it over and over and over. Oh, this makes sense to me. And look how many dx's you got. Squared. And you got two d's there. That's why they use this notation. So let me say it again. You go, what is this? I'm taking the derivative of this with respect to a derivative. So are you ready to invent our formula? Was everyone okay with that move, though? All I need to do, I'm going to change colors, is divide a dt and a dt. Right here, ready? Psh, ding. And here, Psh. there's our formula. That's our formula that we're going to do. We'll take the derivative of dy dx with respect to t and divide it by the derivative of x with respect to t. And I say we use the last curve. And when we're done, we can talk about where's the function, or excuse me, where's the curve concave up and where's the curve concave down. Does that sound cool? Where's it sad and where's it happy? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Upside down frown, concave down. Second derivative is negative. Uh, I gotta rewrite this. What was x again? <laughs> we used the same curve. What was x? Uh, two plus three natural log t. Cool. What was y? Uh, t squared plus six. T squared plus six. Okay. Let's find the second derivative. Well, didn't we already find that? I'm going to write that down. What was dx dt? Or excuse me, we already found dy dx. What was dy dx? In terms of t? Two thirds. Two thirds. But uh, before we put the t in there, though, we'll just find it for general for any point. 2t over 3 over t. Okay, so it was the 2t over the 3 over t. Hey, uh, you want to make that look better? Before I left it like this, and then we plugged in once, but how do you divide fractions? Flip it. You multiply the reciprocal. What's t, 3 over t flipped over? So I get 2t over 1 times a t over 3 gives me 2t squared over 3. If you wanted to write it a little prettier. So that's going to go in the denominator. Oh, excuse me, that's going to go here. I apologize. And then we got to take the derivative of this with respect to what left? T. t. That'll go up here. And then what will be in the box? Uh, dx over d over t. So this won't be confusing. I think the hardest thing is just knowing this math formula. Right? Well, how can I find this when everything's at t's? I'm just taking my calc 1 equation and dividing dt into dt here. That's all. All right, so what's the derivative of this right here? I'll put a box on it with respect to t. 
What's that derivative respect of t? 4t over 3. 4t over 3. So far, so good. Nicholas, okay with that? Yeah, what did you Oh, so what we did was I took the derivative with respect to t of the dy dx we had previously, which was this. I thought we'd clean it up because I didn't feel like doing quotient rule there. You see that? <laughs> I was like, wait, we can write that like this. And then we wouldn't have to do quotient rule. Now, gosh, we didn't need all this room. What's the derivative with respect to t? I think we already found that. That's just what? What's the derivative of x with respect to a t? Oh, 3 over t. There we go. Now, I'm not going to write it like that in the back of the book because that's a complex fraction, right? So can we simplify that? 4t squared over 9. In town. And we need just multiply the reciprocal. You might think the t's cancel here, but they don't. He says you multiply a t over a 3, and you get 4t squared over There's the answer. But I would like us to investigate where is this curve concave up and where is it concave down? Cool. It's concave down when this is negative. The curve is concave up when this is positive. It may sound like a trick question though, because a lot of you are investigating right now. It's squared. It's squared. This is the second derivative. And second derivative, when it's negative, it's concave down. The curve is concave down, this curve right here. The curve is concave up, and second is positive. Isaac's saying, well, he's making the observation. you got a t squared in there. That means that any t value, this is going to be what? Positive. This curve is always what? Always concave up. Because the second derivative is always positive. Do you notice that? Notice. The second derivative is always positive. So this curve right here is concave up. I'll put CU on what interval? It's concave up. I'm talking about the curve. The curve is concave up on the interval. Negative and positive. True? Isn't that cool? The integral? You mean the interval? The interval. Sorry. The interval. That it's concave up and it's never concave down. Uh, you want to know, here's an easier example of a curve that's always concave up. Think of y equals x squared. What does it do? Ooh, it's always, right? It's always concave up. Are you going to ask us, like, put that kind of notation on the test? You don't have to put this notation. They call this interval notation. You can put it in set notation. Do you like the R? <laughs> the funny. Oh, um, but <laughs> but what about the domain of x about the original functions? Exactly. Yeah. So with the domain, we can talk about that as well now too. Natural log of t, and this this is calling for uh, you know all x and y right? For t, these t values here. But we could go back. They don't ask you for the domain on these. But it's a good thing to investigate in terms of domain. She's saying t always has to be what? Because uh, natural log of t, t always has to be greater than a what? A zero. And, and x always has to be greater than two, right? That's right. And x always has to be greater than two. Um, but when it comes to that, you don't you do not have to indicate that. But it's great observation when you're talking about this expression. Because the natural log having a limited domain, the same thing would happen with the square root. You know what freaks people out, though? How this has a t squared and this has a t squared. So they think they made an error. That's why I chose this example. They think, wait a minute, I did a derivative of this. Why am I coming down to this? And it stays t squared. It's because everything is parametric right now. You're trying to think Cartesian there. You could go and eliminate that parameter, and that's what you would see. I was trying a little bit. Hey, super job with that. I'll leave this up here. I mean, here's our math formulas, right? Uh, the reason I'm choosing this one, I'm choosing this one because 
I thought somebody would go home and try this tonight, and I didn't want to bug you. And that, it's not hard, but we can, it's, it's a good problem for class. It's a good problem for, so I'm taking this from uh, our homework problems. Practice problem number 13. X equals e to the t. And y equals t e to the negative. Now the first thing is, they don't ask you to get the tangent line of the curve on this problem. They just want two things. They want this, then they want this, and then they go, for what value of t is the curve concave upwards? So they want this, they want this, and then for what value of t is the curve concave upward? Well, let's start here. That's not even. And when the derivative of y with respect to t. One rule. Do you all spot it? It's not that I said it's not easy, it's not hard, but what rule do we have to apply? Uh -huh. Chain rules are never very good. Overriding rule, though. Product rule. Everyone see this? There's a t in front of e to the negative t. That's like an x times the e to a negative x. What rule do I have to apply? Product rule. I know. But just be careful of that. We have to do product rule. So let's just get ready. That's going to be the dy dt. So product rule. First times rid of the second plus the second times rid of the first, right? All right, first, what's the derivative of the second? This is why it's saying you need chain rule. What's the derivative of e to the negative t? <coughs> chain rule, you get negative e to the negative t. So I'll put a parenthesis because it's multiplication. First times to the second plus the second <coughs> times to the first. What's the of the first? That's the, oh, by the way, I should underline these so when, because we're doing product rule here. Your first and your second. First times to the second plus the second times of the first, which is just a one. A one. By the way, I should rewrite that. What is that? Negative t e to the negative t plus e to the negative t. If anybody wants to factor, what could you factor out of that? E to the negative t. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what's this? Just e to the t. <sighs> what do you do? Whew. And when you say that I could factor out an e negative t on that, right? Yep. I think it would look cool. Then you'd have a negative t plus one? Yep. Or what's another way to say negative t plus one? Or minus t. I'll write that. What's still in the denominator? How can I make that? Like, I want to bring that upstairs. So I subtract, right? Negative t subtract the t makes it, I'll put it right here, e to the negative t. You can write this as 1 minus t or t minus 1. I wanted to do this with you so you didn't get bugged with this. Awesome, Connor. Wait, wait, what's doing the last step? So in that last step, because these are kind of like this in there, where we subtract powers. Uh, and you go, well, that's just 3 minus 2. I got the common base. We got the common base at E. But this was a positive. So you go, OK, ready? What's a negative T subtract the T? Okay. And you go, oh, it's negative T. Right, thank you. Great question. Yeah, you're welcome. That's what I mean. I didn't want you to go back. I know this one would look a little, a little weird there. Working that one at home, I didn't want you to freak out on that one. Hey, I haven't done it, but if you want to investigate it while I'm working this out, you know what you might find easier on this problem? Why don't we just try to get this and this? You might want to try eliminating the parameter. You might find the problem actually easier. I just want to point that out. It's something just to think about. You know, I'll keep working the problem, but you might go, man, I wondered if I eliminated the parameter, that this problem would have been easier. Because I mean, this got a little messy here, didn't it? It wasn't hard, but you had to be careful with product rule. You had to be careful with the chain rule right there, and then this factoring thing would be very careful. All right. Was that all right with that?
But hey, some of you are looking at it right now going, can I eliminate that parameter? And I bet you can. Do the logarithm. There you go. Yeah. So get rid of the e. Yeah, and see what you get. You might look and go, this derivative is easy in a Calc 1 class. It's just something to think about. You can always eliminate the parameter. But I didn't want you to think that it's always easy. Sometimes it's hard. It makes the problem hard. Sometimes a problem like this makes it easier. Yes, I thought it was. All right, now what do I have to do? Uh, i got to take the derivative of this with respect to one. T. So in product rule, with the chain, here I go. Take the derivative of that with respect to T. First, what's the derivative of the second? One. One or negative one? Negative one. Okay. First time, do the second plus the second. What's the derivative of this? Ch -ch -ch chain rule. Just a negative two e to the negative two t. I'm gonna write that again. What is all that? That's negative e to the negative two t minus two e to the negative two t plus a What's negative t times a negative 2? Two? 2t two e to the negative 2t. Remember? e to the negative 2t to the negative. I just showed this. You get the negative 2 e to the negative 2t, and then I just multiply the negative t times this and made it positive. All right, what's dx dt, though? Oh, again, what's this? This is just what? What's your max? I'll put it in. But I was hoping you can help me simplify it. Just to make it a little bit more simple. So we can look at concavity. So can I factor anything out of the top? E to the 2t, negative, right? Yeah, all right. I'll factor out an e to the negative 2t. Um, what are we left with? That would be a. Negative 1 minus 2. Oh, wow, those are like terms. Plus, what's this? 2t, and what's this all over? E to the t. So far, so good. You could have combined these first. Does anyone see the like terms? Yeah, very good. Uh, so now I have, oh, I want to bring that up again. Connor, if you don't mind, I'll wait till you're done writing. I was wondering if you could help me get that up here. By that subtraction of powers. Uh, e to the negative, right? We've got to do negative 2t subtract another t. So that's like negative 2 minus 1. Isn't that negative 3 uh, now? Negative three, there we go. So here it is. E to the negative 3t. This is the second derivative with respect to t. Uh, 2t minus a 3. There we go. And then I was wondering if you could help me with concave up and concave down. Sean hit a good point earlier about domain. You should think of the domain of the curve. There's no natural logs in here, and everyone, domain of e to t exists for all t values, right? t can be negative or positive, so we're safe there. Um, ooh, concavity should be okay on this. Everyone, can you, there's a number here. Keep in mind, e to the anything is never zero. So can you help me figure out when this turns into zero? And then we can figure out when it's concave up and when it's concave down. Uh, 2t minus 3. What makes 2t minus, what t value makes 2t minus 3 equal zero? 3 halves. 3 halves, okay. So, at t equal 3 halves, right? Like a point of inflection? <laughs> point of inflection? When is this curve concave up? So the curve is? And when I'm talking about this curve right here, way up here, that curve is concave up on uh, what interval? What interval will it be? So we know that 3 halves makes the 0. When you put numbers bigger than 3 halves, does this become positive or negative? This can never be 0 and this can never be negative. If you have to, make a little number line. Just help you out with it. I'll just put a little number line here. 3 halves. Right? That's like our key point, possible point of inflection. How about numbers higher than that? Is this positive or negative? Like it. Put 100 in there. Positive. 
It's positive, put a plus. Uh, what about on this side? What's the number less than three has that's easy to test? One. I like it, zero. Put a zero in there. Two times zero minus three is one. This is going to be concave down over here, and then it's going to be concave up over here. And it looks like at t equal to 3 halves, we have a POI, a point of inflection, or an inflection point. So when it's concave up on, I'll use interval notation, 3 halves to infinity, and where is it? Concave down, CD. Negative infinity to 3 halves. And I, I do want to go back to Sean's good point about, well, we should investigate domain. Now we wrote that. Is this function okay in terms of domain? We're like, well, it has e to t or c. e to t there. Um, the only thing is, yeah, e to t can never be zero, so we don't even have problems with like the denominator. There you go. Hey, now that we did all that, there was a lot of writing on the board. I was wondering if someone knew how to eliminate the parameter. You might have found this problem. I don't know. You eliminate the parameter just for fun, just for kicks. Plus, by doing this, this helps you better relate Cartesian and parametric. The idea of looking at curves parametrically or just Cartesian. So, what would t equal to here? Natural log x. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. t equals the natural log of x if x equals e to t. Take the natural log of both sides, right? Natural log of x would equal natural log of e to t. t equals natural log of x. Is everyone okay with that? Where could I substitute that? Here's your curve. y equals natural log of x times e to the negative what? I bet you we can make that simple. Where can I move that little negative? Properties of logs. Right there. So I'll write this again, everyone. This is equal to natural log of x times e to the natural log of x to a negative 1. What's e to the n of x? So close. E to the n of blah of blah. Yeah. So what's e to the n of x? Excellent. So we have an x to the negative 1. This is, this curve is y equal to natural log of x times x to a negative 1. And what is x to a negative 1? <laughs> 1 over x. So my point is, I'm going to put it right here when I got a room. This is the curve. Can I see that? That's the curve we're talking about. That's the same curve as this goofy stuff right here, which looks confusing. It's just natural log of x over x. Okay. You do a derivative, you got to do what? Quotient rule and stuff, unless you want to do product rule. But you might have found it easier than this because we still have to do product rule, right? I just want to point that out. Sometimes you can look at it. This problem didn't say anything about the eliminating the parameter. They just said find dy dx and find the second derivative as well. So I just want to point that out. Sometimes you, you eliminate a parameter. You might find this easier to work with than this. But now, hey, going back to domain, I know these were t values, but x, right? That's natural log of x. So like, wait a minute, x here would have to be greater than 0. I know. Hey, can I raise? How was the, the x though? How was the x in the negative first time? Oh. So e to the ln of what? Blah. It's just blah. So e to the ln of x is x. This was all raised to a negative 1. So I replaced that with x, which was now to a negative 1. Do you see that? And the first thing I did was I took that negative 1 there and I moved it to this power here, which is one of the properties of logarithms. Cool. And by the way, that would always happen. Here's another one. Um, e to the negative 5 natural log of x. Let's look at that. Just, just for another example. I can move this where? Here, you get e to the natural log of x raised to the what? Negative fifth, because what's e to the element of x? x, you get x to the negative fifth. Or, 1 over x to the fifth. Is that cool? Now, what if this wasn't negative? Can we do one of those? You might find it easier. You want to simplify that? e to the 5 element of x. Oh, wait, you got it. So it would be an x to the fifth. Yeah. You might find that one a lot easier. E to the 5 out of x. Okay. Hey, you might find this one easier. I can move that one. Boom. It's just going to be what? X to the 5. 
Right? But the negative can turn you off, but that's what's happening there. Nicholas. So how do we relate the answer that we got e to the negative three t to the one is not the next Wait, say again? So this answer that we got, we eliminated the parameter. Right, and I want to point some stuff out. We got a lot of right on the board. This, Nicholas, this was the first row. So I'm going to put a word here. This would be slope of curve. The curve was just defined parametrically. That's the slope of the curve. But you know, this is, we've eliminated t. If you took the derivative y with respect to an x, which you notice you could do quotient rule, it wouldn't be that bad, though, would it? It's not that bad. You're getting the slope of the curve. That's just in terms of t. That's right. Okay. That's all we, exactly. And I didn't want to know, like, is this better? See, it's hard to see now the need for this. It's like, eh, it's not that it's bad or anything. You're just getting used to putting things, what, working parametrically with curves. But there becomes a need, like in Calc 3, when we want to do everything parametrically. Cool. But then, hey, this answer, right here, this was second derivative. That would have been like you get the second derivative of this, which deals with the concavity. I love it. But if, but wasn't the question that you formulated like, what's the slope of the curve? Yeah. No, they just said, but I know they just wrote for which values of t is the curve concave upward. But you're right, you know, that concave upward, concave downward does deal with a point of inflection, but that's all they asked. So we didn't have to list that. Now I love your question. Yeah, when the book on this part, they just go, what values of t is the curve concave upward? Can we go to that final equation of t to the point of inflection? You sure could. Yeah. I love it. She goes, T would equal three halves. And at T equal to three halves, I'm going to write this here, Sean. At T equal to three halves, concavity of curve, because the curve is the curve. <laughs> concavity of curve changes. And what I mean by changes, it changes signs. And when it goes from concave down to concave up. And by that, the definition at that value, that's the point of inflection. But to find it in x's and y's, what would you have to do? Plug it in here. But hey, what's the point? At e to the 3 halves, comma, 3 halves, 